Hello again, everybody. Welcome to USA Wrestling Weekly. I'm Scott Casper. It's time for this week's news and features from USA Wrestling, the national governing body of our sport. Well, this week we report on our first days of competition at the Worlds for the best 17 to 20 year old wrestlers at the 2012 FILA Junior World Championships in Pattaya, Thailand. The event will feature the best age group athletes in all three Olympic styles. Now, history proves that athletes who have success at the FILA junior level go on to win senior level medals at both Olympic and World Championships. Over the years, the U.S. has enjoyed quite a bit of success at the FILA junior age level. Appropriately, the event was once called a spree, the French word meaning to aspire. Now, if you check the record books, you'll find at this level, the U.S. has won 31 gold medals. Well, included in this group are incredible athletes indeed olympians and world medalists one and all including randy lewis olympic champion three-time world champion christy davis freestyle olympic silver medalist stephen abbas olympic bronze medalist garrett lowney and greco roman women's olympian and world bronze medalist ali bernard world bronze medalist donnie pritzloff in men's freestyle four-time greco roman olympian mark fuller freestyle olympian jimmy carr and greco roman olympian jason gleesman well, the beautiful and mysterious nation of Thailand, with its rich cultural history, plays host to the event this year. Thailand and its people have a strong tradition in many combat sports and a growing interest in the international styles of wrestling. Thailand makes good sense for this competition as it continues to grow as a top destination vacation spot for world travelers. Well, to better prepare for the tournament, both the Greco-Roman and women's freestyle teams traveled to Thailand prior to the competition to complete their final training. The competition is being held at the very impressive sports venue in Pattaya, known as the Eastern National Sports Training Center. USA Wrestling's Jason Bryan is in Thailand reporting for both the mat.com and the mat.tv. He shared with us the video of the opening ceremonies that included traditional Thai costumes, music, and dance, a small but colorful taste of the cultural experiences our junior level athletes are experiencing this week. Well, the FILA Junior World Championship started with the Greco-Roman competition and Team USA got off to a strong start on the first day of the event. On his fourth trip, to the Junior World Championships, 132-pound Jesse Thilke came home with a long-coveted medal from the event, winning bronze. In fact, Thilke had not won a match in his three previous Junior World events. This time he won four tough matches and came close to earning a spot in the gold medal finals. Let's break it down. He opened the day with a 1-0-1-0 victory over China's Lixim Tai and followed with a 1-0-1-0 victory over Croatia's Christian Simatic in the second round. In the quarterfinals against Maxim Mamulat of Moldova, Thilke battled from behind to win both periods. In the first, he trailed 3-0 but scored a three-pointer on a body lock to win the period 3-3. In the second period, a late push-out gave him a 1-1 victory. Thilke was defeated in a controversial semifinals bout by Iran's Ramin Tahiri. The U.S. challenged a call in the first period, and after a number of reviews by the officiating team, the Iranian was then awarded the period 3-2. The second period went to Tahiri 1-0, putting Thilke into a bronze medal bout. Thilke rebounded with poise to win his bronze medal match over Ruminus Dagas of Lithuania 1-0-1-0. Thilke was named the Matt.com Wrestler of the Week for his tremendous efforts. It felt good to win my first match because that was the first match I ever won. And then after that, you know, I was just rolling and nothing I can do about the judges call and the, you know, Iran match. It's, I made it to the world semis. That's nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, pretty much dominated besides that match. So I feel good. A lot of room for improvement, but I, you know, I made, made up a lot of ground in this past year. I mean, as you can see, this is some of the highest level, especially for Junior Greco, because, you know, our guys are behind and these guys are so focused on it when we wrestle folks out. You know, I'm just excited to keep moving forward, do what I do, and have fun. That's the most important thing. Next, we go to 163 pounds. There we find Jordan Spieler. He finished seventh, just out of medal contention. He opened up the day with a tough draw against Russia's 2012 European Junior Champion, Islam Sharyev. Spieler prevailed 3-1-0-1-1-1. Spieler scored a late takedown with 30 seconds remaining and won the decisive third period. Spieler won his second match against Turkmenistan's Doran Yalimov by disqualification. Three times the opponent backed away from Spieler's powerful underhook and was hit with a caution all three. In the quarterfinals, Spieler was defeated 1-0-1-0 by Belarus's Kazabek Kilov. When Kilov reached the final, Spieler was pulled back into the repechage. Spieler was knocked out of the tournament after a 6-0-1-0 repechage loss to Iran's Payani Buyeri. I got, um... 
you know, a great deal of, you know, what I have to do next time to in order for me to win this uh, championship. I'm a little disappointed. I didn't get the medal, but um, I'm really glad that, you know, I came out here and I know what to expect next time I'm over here. Two U.S. wrestlers went 0-1 on the first day and were not pulled back into the repage. Isaiah Verona at 121 pounds and Marcus Finau at 211 pounds. Verona lost to an opponent from Korea while Finau lost to a Ukrainian wrestler. National Greco-Roman developmental coach Ike Anderson talked about day one of the Greco-Roman action. The kids wrestled uh, hard. They wrestled great, especially Jesse. Um, you know, he's been here four times. As he said back after he won the bronze medal match, he never won a match here, and now he won three matches and, and won a bronze medal. So, so we were so happy. Four. Okay. And we were happy for him. And uh, Jordan, you know, he stepped up, beat the rush in the first round. Uh, you know, he got a little worn down there when he was wrestling a kid from Belarus, but all the guys he lost to, you know, placed in the tournament. Well, now we go to day two of Greco competition. The U.S. tried hard, but at the end, they did not earn any more medals. Three athletes did, however, place 10th in their weight class, each one scoring a point for Team USA. Competing in his second FILA Junior World Championships, Mike Fuffinger was 10th at 121 pounds. Mike opened up with a 6-0-1-3-6-0 first round victory over South Africa's Marco Kotze and then lost in the quarterfinals 4-0-3-1 to Turkey's Sarif Kilik. Buffier missed the Russellbacks when Kilik failed to make the finals. Mike will turn to college next in the books when he returns home and he'll hit the collegiate match this fall for Division III powerhouse Augsburg College. At 185 pounds, Lucas Sheridan opened with a win of his own. He scored a 0-1, 3-0, 3-0 win and needed all three periods to defeat Azerbaijan's Fad Aliyev. Sheridan lost in the second round to Boris Gungor of Turkey, 5-1, 3-0. And when Gungor reached the final, Sheridan was drawn back in to the repage. There he was edged out by Elias Ezinov of Turkmenistan, 2-0, 1-0. Ending 10th in the final standings, Sheridan will head stateside now where he wrestles collegiately for Indiana. Also placing 10th was Columbia heavyweight Wyatt Baker, who was defeated in his only match. He lost to Ukraine's Mykola Kuchmi, 2-0, 2-4, 4-0. Kuchmi did not reach the finals, which ended Baker's tournament. At 145 pounds, Nick Alvarez was the other U.S. wrestler on the mats. He fell short of the top 10, but did win his opening bout. Alvarez started strong with a 2-0, 2-0 victory over Matus Morbitzer of the Czech Republic. He dropped his second bout to an opponent from Tajikistan and was not drawn back into the repage. Alvarez competes for the USOEC in well next sea action in October at the University World Championships. Overall, the United States finished with 15 points and 12th place. With 40 points, Azerbaijan won the Greco-Roman team title. Russia and Turkey both finished with 38 points, but with more gold medals, Russia claims second. On next week's broadcast, we'll share results and interviews from both the women's and men's freestyle events at the Junior Worlds in Thailand. As always, you can visit themat.com and themat.tv for daily updates. has been there. They've been the lifeblood of, uh, of the sport. Uh, it's been a long time and they've been at the top of the game every year forever. And I'll tell you what, now that I think about it, maybe that's where I've gotten my inspiration because, uh, you know, I, I always want to be in the top of my game in wrestling and I think that's where ASICS is and wants to be as well.
Well, the most recent four-year cycle has completed with the 2012 Olympic Games in London. USA Wrestling finished with four medals, including two Olympic champs. The focus of our national teams now turns to the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Our nation's regional training centers are the daily workshop for the American Game Plan for Rio. Most regional training centers are affiliated with major college programs. It's not easy to establish or keep an elite training site. There are specific requirements each location must meet in order to become an RTC. Each spot must mandate a specific international-style training schedule and a coaching staff which is certified through the National Coaches Education Program. RTCs play an important role in America's success in men's freestyle wrestling. All three of our new U.S. Olympic medalists train full-time on a college campus with RTCs. Olympic champion Jordan Burroughs trains at the University of Nebraska. Olympic champion Jake Varner trains with the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club at Penn State. And Olympic bronze medalist Coleman Scott trains at Oklahoma State. The other four 2012 Freestyle Olympic team members also train at colleges with RTCs, including both Sam Hayeswinkle and Jared Freyer train at the University of Oklahoma. Jake Herbert trains with the Cliff Keen Wrestling Club at the University of Michigan. And Travel Delognev trains with the Ohio Regional Training Center at Ohio State. In fact, all 21 members of the current U.S. Freestyle team train in a college setting. National Freestyle Coach Zeke Jones talks about the importance of regional training centers to his program. Obviously, the results tell you why it works. You know, our Olympic team all came from regional training centers. It shows you that the model works, um, but it's really nothing new. It's really a, a guy named Art Martori that had the vision 30 years ago when he married a wrestling club with a university atmosphere like they did at Arizona State, Oklahoma State, and, you know, Iowa's done similarly, and now other places are doing it. So, um, you know, it's a model that works. Well, they've trained for four long years to compete in the Olympics. After all of that, you'd think our athletes would take some time for themselves. Not so. There was not much time off for Women's Team USA after London. The International Wrestling Federation FILA will host a Senior Women's World Championships September 27th through the 29th in Strathcona County, Canada. The Olympic Games has four weight classes for women's freestyle, while the World Championships has seven. The championships in Canada will feature many of the same stars we saw in Olympic competition. These championships offer more opportunities to excel and win world-level medals for their respective countries. Well, it'll take wrestle-offs to set the U.S. women's team. They'll take place September 15th at the World Team Training Camp at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. Make no mistake, the nation's best women are already in serious training. One position on the U.S. team has already been decided. With her Olympic bronze medal win in London, Clarissa Chun automatically earns a spot on that Canadian-bound 2012 world team. Chun hopes to match her success at the 2008 World Championships, where she won world gold just weeks after the Beijing Games. Clarissa talks about competing at the Worlds in Canada in the quest for another world title. Um, just another opportunity to compete against the world. Um, and when they told me, you know, I have a spot on the world team, I'm like, what better gift is that, you know? All other members who competed at the 2012 Olympic Games will vie for spots on the world team and already two have decided to compete at the wrestle-offs. In London, Kelsey Campbell competed at 121 pounds. For the world team trout, she'll wrestle at 130 pounds, a non-Olympic weight class. In the past, she's made two world teams at this weight and looks for another chance at a world medal. I've definitely learned some things. I've, I've learned a lot, I think, going through this whole experience and then coming back, watching the junior world team prepare. I mean, I think this is stuff that I'm going to take with me into the next quad. So I definitely feel like it's given me an edge preparing for the next one. At 138 pounds, Elena Periscova wrestled one match at the 2012 Games. In 2010, she was a world silver medalist who had competed in four world games. She looks forward to showcasing her talents in Canada if she makes the team. I'm still looking to redeem myself a little bit, but still this world doesn't make up for Olympics. But it's just, you know, it's another year, so we got to move on to the future. And it's another world championship, you know, and being a world champion something special. So, I mean, just got to move on. Well, the other 2012 Olympian, 158-pound Allie Bernard, has decided not to try out for this world team. The roster of potential athletes in a variety of weight classes continues to build. Of course, we'll have updates for you on coming broadcasts.
Each season, Liberty Mutual's Responsible Sports Community Grant Program awards $65,000 to youth sports organizations and school sports programs that demonstrate their commitment to responsibility in youth sports. Your organization could be one of our 20 winners this season. It's easy. Simply visit ResponsibleSports.com and click on the Community Grant Program. Administrators register their organization with the program, then reach out to rally parents, coaches, and team supporters to log on and review either the Responsible Sports Parenting or Responsible Coaching Guide. Then complete the quiz and showcase your mastery of the concepts. Every successfully passed quiz is worth a point that you can credit to your favorite youth sports organization or school sports program. Connect with friends, family, and neighbors to rally more support. The teams and schools with the most points at the end of the grant period win. It's that simple. Watch the leaderboard throughout the grant season, then rally more of your supporters to increase your totals. Liberty Mutual is committed to celebrating and championing youth sports and to financially supporting organizations that demonstrate their commitment to responsible sports. Join the movement and start earning points toward your community grant. Well, the women are not alone in attacking the mats. Practice has resumed indeed for a number of men's freestyle stars and Greco-Roman wrestlers at the OTC. They have their eyes on the pending 2012-2013 international season. Regular workouts at the training center are already underway for a number of athletes. Among them, freestyler Moza Fay. He continues his quest for U.S. World and Olympic teams. Faye now has joined the successful U.S. Army World Class Athlete Program as part of his preparation for the next Olympic four-year cycle. Well, not only it's a, it's a great job, it's a great career to get involved in, and the benefits, you know, there's stuff that, you know, way down 30 years down the road, I'm going to still be having benefits from that. So I can still continue to wrestle, and uh, I, I have an awesome opportunity to do that with WCAP. Greco-Roman wrestlers are back on the mats as well as they begin training for their new year. A recent practice included a game of soccer on the wrestling mats, followed by drills and live wrestling sparring. The top young Greco star, Ben Sanchez, has high goals and expectations for the year, but his sights are firmly set on the 2016 Olympic Games. I'm just ready to, to compete at everything. You know, I'm going to compete at everything. That's my plan. That's been my plan. And just you know, continue on that road and on that path. Well, it was a difficult summer for the U.S. Greco program. They came back from the Olympic Games with no individual medals after three challenging days at London's Excel Center. Plans are in place to strengthen the Greco program with an eye on winning medals over the next four years, and that includes Rio's 2016 Olympics. National Greco-Roman coach Steve Frazier has invited the wrestling community, that's you folks, to share your thoughts and ideas on building the Greco-Roman team back to international prominence. We asked Coach Frazier about the future of the sport in America. Well, of course, I think we have uh, the potential of major success. Um, I've always thought that uh, uh, since the first day I came to USA Wrestling, I still think it... We are having our issues and our problems right now for a variety of reasons, but uh, there's no doubt in my mind that we can get back to the top of the world in Greco-Roman wrestling. Well, we did it in 2007. I know that's old news, uh, but it proves that we could do it. And we've been third a few times in the world as a team. Uh, we've had great, great athletes win a lot of medals for us. Uh, so we're very confident. I'm very confident. Well, those of you who would like to send suggestions and volunteer to help Bill Greco-Roman in your area should contact Coach Frazier by email at sfrazier at usawrestling.org. Well, the saying goes that summer wrestlers make winter champions and nothing proves that more than the success of our young athletes who compete on USA Wrestling mats in the offseason. Win Magazine, one of the nation's top publications specializing in all levels of wrestling, had extensive coverage of the major USA Wrestling age group events this summer. Win High School editor Rob Sherrill writes a column each year identifying the high school wrestlers who had the best summer performances in these events. 
Cheryl calls it the Summer RPI Leaders List and picks an athlete in each weight class for recognition. Selection is based on quality wins and total losses. All of those honored are returning to compete in high school this year. Included on the Summer RPI are the following USA Wrestling Summer Champions. Cadet Nationals Freestyle Champion Scott Parker of Pennsylvania at 106 pounds. Cadet Nationals Freestyle Champion Zahid Valencia of California at 113 pounds. Cadet Nationals Freestyle Champion and Greco-Roman runner-up Cole Weaver of Michigan at 120 pounds. Cadet Nationals Greco-Roman Champion and Freestyle runner-up Seth Gross of Minnesota at 126 pounds. Junior Nationals Greco-Roman Champion and Freestyle Bronze Medalist Hayden Tuma of Idaho at 138 pounds. Cadet Nationals Greco-Roman Champion and Freestyle runner-up Mason Manville of Minnesota at 145 pounds. And Cadet Nationals Greco-Roman and Freestyle Champion Bo Nickel of Texas at 160 pounds. Cadet Nationals Freestyle Champion and Greco-Roman runner-up Michael Pixley of Missouri at 182 pounds. Cadet Nationals Greco-Roman and Freestyle Champion Lance Bennick of Minnesota at 195 pounds. Cadet Nationals Greco-Roman and Freestyle Champion Roy Nash of Utah at 220 pounds. And we applaud all the talented youngsters who were recognized for their summer achievements at these events. And we thank our friends at Win Magazine for their extensive coverage of these competitions. There comes a point in your life that determines who you are, whether you will lead or follow, whether you will fight or give in, whether you will win or lose, and what you will count as your victory. Well, a former wrestling star has been named as a finalist for election into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. NFL star Curly Culp, an all-pro defensive tackle during the late 60s and 70s, was selected as a finalist by the Hall's senior committee. He's among 16 football greats under consideration for induction this year. Culp was a two-sport star at Arizona State, a 67 NCAA wrestling champ at heavyweight, for the Sun Devils, the first NCAA wrestling champion in Arizona State history. He received the Gorian Award for the most pins at the 67 championships, which were held at Kent State. He had three pins at that tournament. Among his victims, Nick Carollo of Adams State, who he pinned in 51 seconds. Now, Culp was also a two-time Arizona State wrestling champ from Yuma High School. He's a charter member of the Arizona State Hall of Fame, a member of the Sun Devil Ring of Honor, and a member of the Yuma High School Athletic Hall of Fame as well. Culp spent the first six-plus seasons with the Kansas City Chiefs, where he was an integral member of the team's Super Bowl IV championship team. He was traded to the Houston Oilers in 1974 and was named the NFL's Defensive Player of the Year in 1975. He finished his pro career with the Detroit Lions and was a six-time Pro Bowl selection. A senior nominee is an individual whose career ended at least 25 years ago. A decision on who will be inducted into the Pro Hall of Fame in Canton is expected this February. Well, Liberty Mutual's Responsible Sports Program has its fall community grant period that opened on September 1st. The unique program offered by USA Wrestling sponsor Liberty Mutual provides the opportunity for a school, club, or team to earn a $2,500 grant. There are 15 such grants up for grabs, and the wrestling community is encouraged to be a part of the competition. The money can be used to purchase equipment, provide travel funds, support athletes and coaches, and a lot more. The Champions Wrestling Club from Mapleton, Utah, won a Responsible Sports Community grant in the fall of 2011, proving that wrestling groups are capable of winning. The Champions Wrestling Club is using their grant to update facilities, provide added opportunities to club members, and to supplement its growth. All it takes is getting as many members and supporters to participate in an online responsible sports parenting and responsible coaching coursework and then pass a 10-question responsible sports parenting quiz or responsible coaching quiz. Check out ResponsibleSports.com for all the details. Next week, continuing coverage of the FILA Junior Worlds and a lot more. Until then, from the studios of USA Wrestling, I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching.